All right, hello, and welcome back to my uh, tile-based system thingy in Unity tutorial. Today, we are doing pathfinding, because that'd be fun. Uh, we're basically implementing a simple version of the A-star pathfinding algorithm, which I learned from uh, following the Brackies tutorial and sort of converted to use uh, these tiles rather than nodes and change how the neighbors were got a little bit. So if there are any similarities, that'll be why. So just for like transparency and shit. Anyway, let's go and show you a demo. Right, so you see, you've got four little hoplite dudes. I can actually maximize that. That'll probably be better. Uh, maximize. Oh, yep, yeah. so four little hoplite dudes. The green colored tiles represent ones that they can't walk over and the brown ones are ones that they can walk over. So if I press R, they will navigate to a randomly chosen location while avoiding the green tiles. They might like clip over them a little bit because uh, I think it's like if they're within half a unit of a tile they'll move to the next house and they might just go over it but the path won't include one of these tiles. Uh, yeah, you just see they navigate around it. That's pretty much what we did today. So let's go and learn how this was done. Okay, so I'm going to try and uh, sort of combine the theory section and the code section into one because I've got loads of comments to explain how it works. And it'll probably be easier if I can just follow them and not miss anything and you'll get to see the code at the same time for how it finds a path. All right, so basically, but I'll show you this image I made first. Basically, say we want to get from S to T, we want to find the shortest path, which is this, because we want to avoid the uh, tiles we can't walk on, which are X's, the black X's, and yeah. So this will be the shortest valid path to T from S. And it does this by, if I can actually switch the code tile for once. Uh, basically, we've got the start position where we are and the end position where we want to go to. Uh, so first off, we convert these to vector 2s by getting the X and Ys and converting them to integers, which will roughly give us the grid coordinate of the tile that the uh, whatever you want it to move is on, because the grid starts at zero. Zero, and then just goes out, so. As long as they're like, they aren't on a negative X or Y, it'll work. So then we convert the, use these integers, but we have to convert them again, because vector two is a float, uh, to get the tiles out of the, uh, the grid of tiles we've generated. So these are assigned to start node and target node, respectively, again, from the end pos and start pos. And then we check if the target node isn't a walkable tile. So if it was to, like greeny color in uh, the example, then we're saying, all right, the target isn't walkable. We don't really want to go there. So we'll just return and not run the get path. But if it is walkable, so it will basically, we get two lists. This is the open set is basically tiles we want to check if like it can be the next tile. And the closed set is the list of tiles that we've checked and don't want to check again. So the open set, we just add the start node. And since the uh, open set is now more than zero, it'll start this loop and it'll assign the open set, first value of the open set to node. And it'll go through all the open set counts. And basically if there is a tile in the open set, which has a lower F cost, and the F cost is, I think, it is a combination of the G cost and H cost of the tiles, which the G cost represents the cost of moving from the start tile to this tile. And the H cost is an estimation of moving from uh, the current tile to the tile we want to go to. So F cost is basically just an estimation of the distance from start to finish if you've used that tile that you're currently checking. Now, yeah, so if the F cost is less than or equal to the nodes that I've cast of the current tile you're checking. And if the H cost, which I think I've just forgotten completely, uh, 
if the distance between this tile and the uh, distance between this tile and the end tile is lower, then we're setting node to be that tile in the open set because it would be a better tile. But since on this first iteration, open set is only made up of the starting tile, we can just pretty much ignore that. Then it will remove node from the open set and add it to the closed set. And then it checks. All right. So if the node is the target node, we've finished the path. So we'll retrace the path and like store it somewhere so the uh, path thing that wants to find a path can access it. And after that, if we say if we've not found if we're not on the target node, we will go to we will go grab the neighbor tiles from the grid generator class, which basically just gets the uh, it'll get the tiles coordinates and based on that it'll work out which tiles around it we can get so the most tiles it can get is the one above the one below the one to the left and one to the right but if the tile that we're passing in is on the edge it'll discount certain tiles so that's just basically all it does so once we got the neighbors we'll go through each of the neighbors from this node tile that we're currently using and we will check if the cost goes to the neighbor, we calculate the cost of going to the neighbor from the start of the path. And if the cost is shorter and the open set doesn't contain it, then we basically just set the G and H values. So for the distance between the start and the neighbor and the neighbor and the finish, <coughs> then so we set them if it's correct, if it's a uh, better value. So if it's less, it means there's a shorter distance between the uh, distance between the start and that tile. And then we set the parent node. Uh, that's a new variable in TAS. So we've got a tile math class called parent, which is basically just a way of storing the previous tile in the path. So again, with that example, if we go from S to here, then this tile's parent limit will be S. So basically that's a way of retracing the path. So we'll go, all right, so say if we wanted to go here, we'd get this tile's parent, which would be this one. Then we get this tile's parent, which would be this one, and so on until you've got back to the start of the path. And yeah, so we'll go back to that. So that's what we do there. And we set the G and H costs so we can find that check that. Uh, and then if it's not already in the open set, so if we're not like checking it, the valid tiles here, then we're basically adding it to the open set. And again, it's a loop round because chances are this, it'll have uh, neighbors that we can add. So it, there'll be the open set will still be more than one in length. So we'll take this new tile we found and again, check it against all the open set because we might have found more than one neighbor. And we'll say, all right, which one of these neighbors is closest to the uh, tile that we want to go to? And then it'll just do it again, again, and it'll keep repeating until we've either found the target node or we've realized, all right, there isn't a route to that path then, so we can stop. And uh, we just don't return anything because there's no path. And hopefully that made sense. And now I'll just talk about some of the other methods. So we got the retrace path. Uh, basically, it just goes through, gets parents, and stores them in this list we passed by reference. And remember, passing by reference means that uh, uh, whatever variable we we send as store it'll modify the actual variable rather than just creating a copy in it or passing in a value. So I think we pass in, uh, yeah. So list of tiles here, when we pass it, in, pass it in from get path, it'll get passed by reference to the get path method, which passes it by reference to the retrace path method. So that'll just edit it and add in all the tiles and that's it, yeah. So it basically retraces the path from the parents, which we mentioned earlier. 
and then it has to reverse the path because <coughs> if we're using the parent, then we are basically going backwards through the path. So we just reverse it so it'll be the right way around. And then we assign store to path. So store is now the shortest possible path from A to B the right way around. And we also have a quick method to convert it a list of tile masterclasses to just effect free a list. Because if we're just a unit walking around, we don't need to know like all the little details about the tile. We just need to know like where it is so we can move to it. And that's what that does. So it just goes through each of the tiles, adds the tile transform position to a return value, and then returns it. And this is just to get distance, basically. It, uh, we'll get the distance in grid coordinates between two points. And we'll check to see if which one's bigger. And based on that, it'll return uh, just a bit of multiplication to make it bigger and just to make give us a distance value to the uh, tile. So yeah. Uh, and then this is the just the what the uh, a unit would use to get a path from the tile. So we just give it the start position and then position say where the unit is and where you've clicked to, and it get the path, and it just convert it to a path, so convert it to a list of vector frees from tiles and return that to the unit, which we use here. So basically, this is just the testing uh, method I created. So we've got a public list for a path. This is just to show that we can see the path on the unit. It'll get a random X and Y coordinate between zero and the grid limit. <coughs> I'm sorry, I got a bit sore throat and a cough today. Uh, basically, it'll just get a path to that position and then move along it. So basically, we just uh, transform the translate in the direction between the unit and the tile that we want to go to. And if we're close enough, we'll increment through the list. And if we're not at the end, we'll keep doing that. So yeah, and grid generator also has a few methods. So get tile. Basically, we're passing in a tile, and we wanted to see. All right. So, what is the? Uh, so sorry. So we get the x and y. We we got the x and y positions of the tile as of x two, and we're checking. All right, so if the x is zero, this implies it's on the left side of the screen. But if it's equal to grid dimensions dot x minus one, because remember we're going from zero to grid dimension grid dimensions x minus one, because the for loop for generating the grid starts at zero. So that'd say it was on the right side of the screen. Else we're in the middle. Split the screen. And we have a similar if statement for the Y condition. So we want to check if we're on the top or the bottom on the Y. And like so if you see in like if we got two rep two things to add to the rep valve, we're in a corner, so that's the top left and bottom left there. Else we're on the Y but we're somewhere between the two corners, so we don't need to we can get three neighbors instead of two. And if we're here, we got, we're not on any edge, so we can get four neighbors. Uh, yeah. Uh, these are just the uh, values we had to add to uh, the tile master class, just to show that we have the pathfinder basically. And yeah, so let's take a look at them. So we've got getters and setters for G and F and stuff. Uh, again, it's just a test pathfinder if you want to check it works. Pathfind, get path. And here's just like conversions and retracing, and getting distance and whatnot. And this is just the change we made to the grid generator. So basically we want to say, all right, R is a random tile. And if the random number is more than eight, then we make the tile not walkable and just change the color. So it, we can see that it's not walkable. Yeah, 
Uh, and we've got also got a new method to get tiles based on the X and Y. I think that was that was used by the tile I find class just to get the actual tiles that we want to go to and where we're moving from. So yeah, uh, that was it. All right, so I'll just quickly show you the product again. So uh, just to put it in, we uh, basically just added a test path finding to the script, to the to like hot light test thingy. And as for the actual path finding script, we just add it in, don't need to do anything special with it. So yeah, and if I press R, say we get a path. Uh, if we just pause that and say we click on hoplite 1, its path was only 2, but you can see the coordinates of the path that we got, and for the others as well, that one was a bit longer. And yeah, so that was it. Uh, just some basic pathfinding for it. I will put a link to another the Brachys tutorial, because that was how I learned to have to do a star pathfinding. So if you want... Uh, it was really good, so go check that out if you're kind of confused or something. I found it quite useful to use, but yeah. Uh, so just for watching, like, comment, subscribe, go check out Loud or Quiet and uh, all over stuff I've made. Uh, that hot, the top down shooter, the 2D retro -E crime thingy. Yeah, all that stuff. Links will be in the description, they're on itch.io. It's good stuff. Go check it out. All right, bye.